What's going on everybody? In the test we're doing today, two things are happening at the same time. First of all, we're going to observe the cyclone characteristics of this particular chamber with this burner to see if they're compatible, to see if the flames do okay. Secondly, we're removing the paint off of this canister that's going to be used for Carlos's monotube boiler. There's going to be a coil on the inside of this container and on the outside and it will be covered in insulation as well. But I want to run this in a cyclone configuration because a cyclone configuration has a higher residence time than the dual pass method. Let's look at the difference in flame here. I've just added some waste oil to the diesel fuel. Had a little extra diesel there. I figured I'd finish the job. See it traveling down the line there. The flame's invisible on diesel at this bright out barely see it. Watch what happens here when that waste oil hits. It takes a second, but it's definitely uh, a different beast. Now this is a mixture, obviously. It'll take a second for that to, before it's pure waste oil burning, but uh, nonetheless, the flame's definitely darker. So I'm liking the flow pattern of this flame I'm seeing. We can definitely use this container. I like the way this thing removes paint as well. I do this a lot. Anytime I got to take paint off something like that, I did this for my uh, air compressor wood burner. Yeah, that's a pretty nice flow pattern. That's how the flames will be swirling inside the monotube boiler. Just kind of moving things around here. You got to do the back end now. That ring didn't want to burn off because it's not connected to the tank. This thing's awesome for this. As you can see by that canister of oil there, it burns this oil slow. You can barely see the level dropping. So it's definitely a very efficient burner. It's not one of these massive tank burners that has a propane tank size red hot glowing canister going. I mean, that's wasting tremendous amounts of fuel. This little sucker here puts the heat where the work's at. That's a beautiful flow pattern there. This is going to make one hell of a boiler. There will be a vortex catcher in the center going about a quarter of the way down from the top and, uh, or from the side, I should say, because this is the way we're going to run it is on the side here. And the flames will swirl around in there until they get to the center and they'll fly up a tube that's in the center of the vortex. Definitely an effective way of pulling this off. I'm also testing this burner to see how it does on waste oil. Carlos wanted to know will he be able to burn waste oil when he wants to. You hooked up with a couple of car dealerships, bro, that got some waste oil, and you're in there, man. I don't know if you wash cars for car dealerships or not, but uh, you could definitely uh, do this with free fuel. Just be careful. Look at the wind that's going out right now, guys. It is blasting wind. You can't tell where I'm at because there's rocks on the ground. But the fact this torch isn't blowing out, the dragon would not be able to do this. I have to admit that. Sometimes the dragon just doesn't like the wind, but this particular burner design here can burn in gale force winds without going out. It's the most stabilest combustor design yet. Definitely very happy with it. Just running it through its motions here, seeing how things go. It's definitely very good at taking paint off of stuff like this. Using chemicals and stuff like that would have been a pain in the neck. I can just wire brush this off now and then I gotta paint it again. I'm gonna put some high temp 2000 degree paint on it. For the most part, I think with the water coils wrapped around it, it will never get that hot maybe up to the 1900 degrees, but I'm thinking no, because past testing has shown that a propane flame only gets up to 1900 degrees, so it might be okay with the 2000 degree paint. This is uh, definitely a nice little burner, I'm digging it. I put it on its side in the diamond configuration because there's only one weld seam on it now. I used to cut four pattern pieces and weld them all together like an idiot, but now I make like a paper crochet or whatever they call that.
fold it together. Or origami. Is that what it's called? I make a little origami thing and fold it together and weld it. Help me out in the comments on that, man. What am I trying to say? I make a little pattern and then I fold it together. It works out awesome. But uh, I think this test was a success. I'm, I'm glad to see that this chamber is going to work for this size flame. If it uh, is too small, then it just won't work out. So. Thanks for the views, fellas, and I hope you enjoyed my little uh, paint removal process. Just thought I'd share it with you and uh, let Carlos know what I'm doing. Don't worry, brother, you're not being billed for this time. I'm just getting the paint off of this thing, and uh, this is what we're going to build the boiler out of. I think this is going to work perfect. That's the lid we'll be able to remove and clean everything up with. So, so here's the finished result. Not too shabby. Got all the paint off of that. So essentially what we're doing in this design is a swirling cyclone because the residence time is so much higher. And there's another attribute I want to talk about. A lot of the designs out there on the market use a, something called a dual pass setup. And that's where I guess maybe I should draw this. That's where instead of the cyclone, they send their fireball up through the center like this and it impinges on the top of the tank and then passes back down on the side of some coils here sometimes they have a coil wall here too and the flames will come out like this and then back around well the flames don't really come out like that it's just hot gases so most of your impingements up here on the top of the wall so they've got this fireball doing this jazz like this and then the hot gases flow around the coils, which is stupid. I, I really am not a fan of that. I like to do what's called impinged flame, where the flame is actually impinged on the work area. And I want to give you an analogy that helps you understand this better. What is better when it comes to trying to braise a piece of metal together? Would it be better to heat the entire room up to brazing temperature or to heat up the piece itself? Like think of all the waste heat that is being lost because we're not directing the flame directly on the work. A lot of exhaust gas heat never even contacts the, the surface. So, and it doesn't give up all of its heat. So enormous amounts of heat is wasted because the flame isn't touching the work. All designs I've seen, they do this stupid thing where the flame just shoots up inside the boiler and no flame ever hits the coils at any time it's all a hot gas convection transfer but um, like I said let's say we were trying to braise this piece together so that it wouldn't spin putting the flame directly on the work is going to get it hotter than holding the flame by it and trying to get a little box hot let's say we set it inside of here and then shot a blowtorch in there and tried to braise that together how much waste heat would we see doing that wouldn't that be stupid but the flame we did we, i gotta remember we can't let the flame hit it it's kind of a bad analogy we just want to get the room that hot so that's one way i'd like to use to describe why it's better to have the flames actually hitting these coils in a fireball pattern like this they'll go down and then they'll have to go into the next radius which is smaller and then they'll travel back up where they'll go out of vortex catcher in the center, which is just the center tube. So the amount of distance that it travels is even a greater distance than the dual bypass method. Because in the dual bypass, your distance of travel is this right here. Whereas in the cyclone, we're gonna have the flame come in the baffle and it's going to spin around multiple times. Then it's going to get faster and come back right here. And then it's going to go right back up out the top there. It actually may even drop all the way down to here and then come up out of center spire. I don't have any software and I'm not going to do a water simulation with uh, floating beads or none of that stuff. You can do flow simulations with water and um, contaminants in the water like specks of plastic little tiny plastic beads and stuff so you don't need a expensive computer software 
pretty cool. But anyway, I'm shutting up on that. And there it is, Los, the boiler. This is gonna be about how wide the unit is in its entirety. And we're gonna set it on these rails here. Don't worry, we're gonna have some stainless steel connectors coming off of that tank that connect to the rails. Stainless steel is a horrible conductor of heat, so that will thermally insulate the boiler from these aluminum rails. I'm gonna try to make the thing this long, as long as this beam. 14 inches wide though, and about 14 inches tall. So let me know what you think about that size. It'll have a couple of, it'll have four little caster wheels on it too. So maybe I should only go 12 inches tall. That's what we'll do, we'll make it 12 inches tall. Everything should fit. Okay, fellas, so I just wanna say thanks to all my commenters out there. You guys have been leaving some extremely intuitive and intelligent comments. And I just wanna let some of you guys know who comment often that when you leave links in my comment section, they go to a review section, and I often don't reprove those links because they do something to my videos called Session Ends. If you wanna take some time and look that up, it basically gives my videos poor marks to the algorithm. So I do view those links, and I do go to them, and I check them out, but I try to, to throttle the amount of links that get through because if someone else sees the comment and clicks on it, and they jump off the YouTube, that gives my video a strike session in. So, I mean, why would I do that to myself? I mean, this is how I'm paying the bills these days, fellas. So, don't hate me too much on that, man. I do read your comments. I read them all. I do check the links to see what you show me. You guys are a fantastic resource, man. I mean, the amount of time it would take me to find some of this stuff, it's like I got an army of foot soldiers out there looking for stuff. And, um... Prolific Inventor, I'm getting that damn pump, dude. The 360 PSI thing, um, you talked me into it. So there's a perfect example, see? I do read your guys' stuff, man, and I appreciate all the information you give and uh, all the views.